Ansela, I'm from Tafwa, and I love to listen to today FM, today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton, I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Mulonila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Raki Raki. I'm Mary from Mandera, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Good evening, this is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. In this bulletin, six-year-old is the latest vic- rape victim in the country. AG's office to investigate sexual assault claims and new Nausori Hospital to open in 2017. A six-year-old girl is the latest victim in an alleged child rape case. Police are now hot on their heels to arrest a suspect as investigation continues. Akusi Tatale reports. It is alleged a Lotoka girl has become the latest child rape victim, that she was being raped by her stepfather between Friday and Saturday last week. The case was reported to the Lotoka police station by the victim's uncle, and the child is still under care at the Lotoka Hospital. As I can confirm them, an investigation is currently undergoing. I'm also uh, would like to warn people uh, that uh, investigation, thorough investigation, aggressive investigation will be done. Uh, we will be moving in uh, the quickest uh, time so that we can have them uh, apprehended, interviewed and taken to court. Tundravu told FBC News police will not go lightly on sexual offences committed against the vulnerable in society, especially when children are victims. It is very unfortunate because these vulnerable, uh, the young ones, um, looking up at um, close relatives that are supposed to be protecting them. These are, according to the states and investigation, most of these um, culprits, are those that are suspect, are very closely related to, to the victims. So it's very unfortunate. A special investigation team has been tasked to look into this case thoroughly. They're also looking to the recent alleged rape of a seven-year-old girl. Police are appealing to community leaders, chiefs and those holding high positions in societies to be responsible as recent cases have been reported with many as suspects. Akosita Tale, FBC News. The Attorney General's office will be looking into a alleged sexual assault case which happened two years ago at a multinational company in Walu Bay. The case was brought to the attention of the Acting Prime Minister and Attorney General Ayusad Kayum who was the guest speaker at the Youth Dialogue for Violence Against Women workshop in Suva today. Ali Kimbia has more. Taitushi Savo, who was a representative at the workshop, told the Attorney General that he was sexually assaulted in 2013 while working for an overseas firm at Walu Bay. Savo claims he reported the matter to the Totongo police station and was later told by the police that the matter had been dismissed by the courts. Why does the Fiji police force is not tracing my case? Why did my files disappear? Why isn't the Fiji government doing anything? They have been stripping it under the carpet. Attorney General Aya said Kayum says his office stands ready to look into the case. I'd be quite happy to take the complaint afterwards. If you can give me all the details, if there's any file numbers, any, any report numbers, those recordings, please uh, give it to me. Uh, you can formally, uh, formally actually lodge a complaint with me. Nothing, yeah. And then we can, we can take it up. Savo says he was emailed by the company that the court has no jurisdiction over the case as they are an overseas firm. Sayed Kayum says this is not true and sounds suspicious. So if you have been sexually assaulted in Fiji, uh, even though it's uh, whilst you're working for an overseas company, it does not mean the courts do not have jurisdiction. They have jurisdiction. So that email is wrong. Savo says he felt betrayed by the police on the issue and he will give evidence to the Attorney General's office regarding the case. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. We'll now cross over to Ali Kimbia who will give us more details on this case. 
Thank you, Jackie. Uh, just a while ago, FBC News spoke to police about the issue, and they have confirmed that they will look into it, but they haven't given us a time frame on how long will it take them to reinvestigate the alleged sexual assault case. As of now, we are still trying to figure out the name of the multinational firm in which the alleged victim, Teitusi Savo, was employed at back in 2013. Savo also claims that he was told by the company that the police will come to his workplace and take his statement, but this did not happen. However, earlier today, Savo told the acting prime minister that he has recordings in which the police officers telling him that his case was written off by the courts. Jackie. Thanks for that update, Aliki. Barely a few days into this year's school holidays, drownings are becoming a major concern for the P Fiji police force. So far, 28 people have lost their lives compared to 41 last year. Akusita Tale reports the main concern lies in the increase in the number of children drowning. A 14-year-old boy has become the latest victim after he drowned in the Waikolo River in Kalambu Nasinu over the weekend. The teenager and two other children had gone to the river to recover his flip-flops However, he started facing difficulties in the water. Police are also investigating three separate drowning cases that happened in the last 32 hours. I can uh, confirm that um, three children have already passed away the road drowning. Um, it's a very sad uh, occasion um, and uh, we are closely monitoring um, our picnic spots and uh, other areas where it normally frequents by um, uh, the general public. Uh, it is a very sad case. The latest records released by police show the Southern Division recording the highest number of drownings with 10 people losing their lives. 22 males have lost their lives to drowning, while six were females. However, the big concern lies with children under 10 years of age. It's becoming a concern to us, especially when uh, it involves uh, the vulnerable so the children uh, who have. Uh, um, uh, the dreams of the, the parents that are there, but has been consulted, uh, which uh, could have been avoided if uh, people take extra care. A 13-year-old boy of Kalekana settlement in Lamy drowned when the hobby cat he was sailing in capsized at around 2.30 p.m. at Suva Point on Saturday. A 16-year-old student also drowned while swimming with her younger sister at Naimborembore village in Tailevu over the weekend. In another incident, a 23-year-old man drowned while swimming with his friends in the Sambeto River in Nandi on Saturday. Akusita Tale, FBC News. The new Nasori Hospital project that has been earmarked to cater for the three provinces is in its early stages. People from Tailevu, Rewa and Naitasiri will benefit from the project to be funded through a Ministry of Health allocation in 2016. Savar Tambua has more. The Health Ministry is aiming to make the health system more efficient and use its allocated funds more effectively. Minister for Health Johnny Usamate says the site for the new hospital is away from the flood-prone areas and people can expect better health care once the project is completed. You know, when you develop a new hospital, there's a lot of uh, experts that you have to bring in, all the consultants to look at the various, the environmental impact assessment, the road, the transport, and all that. That current work is being done. It'll be done during, also during the, in 2016. Money has been set aside for that initial kind of work. The location for the new Nosori Hospital is less than five minutes' drive from the existing health facility. I believe it's convenient in a way it's close to the bus stations. Um, one is that. But on the other end, the disadvantage will be for those from Rewa in terms of uh, the current location of uh, the current uh, location of uh, transportation. The location is not far from town, and we are happy for what government has planned for us. Part of the 2016 budget will be allocated for the construction of the new Nosori Hospital up at Wunivivi Hill. This is an effort in trying to improve and uplift the standard of health services provided to the people of Nosori and the surrounding areas. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Education Minister Dr. Mahindra Reddy says the student-teacher ratio is not an issue in the current education system. The ministry will recruit 250 teachers for primary schools and 100 for secondary schools next year. Ritika Pratap reports. 
The current national average in terms of student-teacher ratio in primary and secondary schools is 19 is to 1. You know, it doesn't, doesn't reflect the distribution. What we need to look at is the distribution. What we need to look at is the breakdown between primary and secondary. The primary student-teacher ratio at the moment as we speak is 24 is to 1. The secondary to student teacher ratio at the moment as we speak is 13.5 is to 1. Reddy says this average does not mean much as the class role varies in the urban and rural schools. He says some teachers in rural areas are teaching three classes simultaneously, which is referred to as compulsory teaching. You can have 60 students for one teacher, but we're using digital platform to teach the students. So. We need to, what we want at the moment, what we are targeting at the moment is to break up composite classes that we have in uh, primary schools in the rural interior areas. Is to ensure that one teacher teaches one class so that we can have quality delivery. Dr. Reddy adds there are 457 schools which has less than 8 teachers. So the 250 new recruits will still mean there is a teacher shortage. We are now looking at whether it is uh, justified to maintain the same number of primary schools uh, that we have now. Because these primary schools in the interior and rural areas were established at a time when population was large. Now these schools have student numbers of 40, 50. Uh, what do we do? Uh, we can't ignore the students. But we can't have a full set of infrastructure there. Do we move them to boarding schools and save this and take this infrastructure and staff into another school and give them a full complement of staff? The minister says while they are recruiting 100 new teachers in the secondary school system, the ministry needs to ensure that they have teachers with appropriate subject qualifications. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, Film Festival aims to raise awareness against gender-based violence. रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन वेलकम बैक यूर वॉचिंग एफ पी सी न्यूज एक्टिंग प्राइम मिनिस्टर आई एस साइड क्यूम हैज कॉल फॉर मोर रूरल अवेयरनेस ऑफ डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस इशूज He said this while speaking at the Youth Dialogue for Violence Against Women workshop in Suva today. Violence to rural communities. We have also tended to have many of these discussions focus around Suva. We are very urban centric in these kind of issues. Yeah, we may pull out somebody from some province, you know, we feel, but most of the people who are the advocates of these is issues probably won't be able to last a couple of days in the, in the rural areas. Said Kayum says it is vital that when dealing with this kind of issue, advocates should take away ethnic differences. FWCC coordinator Samima Ali says there are some maritime islands that are neglected, but they are doing all they can to cover the whole of the country. Some islands are still neglected, we know that, we need to get out there uh, and also interior of Vitilevo and Vanuale. But our team in the, in, the, uh, in the north is doing great work. The Youth Dialogue on Violence Against Women workshop is aimed at educating youth on the issue and urging them to act as advocates in their various communities. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority Board Chair Ajit Koragoda says the soon-to-be vacant CEO position at the helm of the government's tax authority will be advertised. Koragoda told FBC News that Firkas Chitoko Tiko Levu will be replaced this week with an acting CEO. The board chairman says the CEO position will be advertised and applicants will have to go through the normal process before a substantive appointment is made in 2016. 
Tiko Levu will wrap up close to 40 years of employment with the tax authority, leaving for the diplomatic corps as Fiji's ambassador to the United Kingdom. It's understood the acting CEO appointee will, con will come from within Thurka. The Fiji Women's Rights Movement has launched the nation's first film festival aimed at raising awareness against gender-based violence. This is part of the 16 Days of Activism Against Violence currently on in the country. In the, social movement is that we'll never address, you know, the festival opened last night with a panel discussion which focused on transgender violence followed by films. You know, we've, we've alluded to many of these challenges, we've talked about them. Now, Salik, I just wanted to ask you maybe if you might want to um, share some of what does it look like? In response, trans activist Sulik Wanga says, the trans women face a lot of problems in our society when it comes to violence. The greatest questions that we are trying to ask ourselves as you know, uh, who are, uh, transgender activists is who gets left behind when we prioritize human rights agenda, even within you know, the development context, within social movements, within organizational priorities and you know, uh, uh, planning and all of that. Too often, Women, LGBT, transgender women get left behind. The discussion also covered disability and age, which also hinders the rights of women in our country. The film festival underway Damodar City is dedicated to raising awareness of sexual and discriminatory violence. The screening showed films depicting the resilience and bravery of women and girls worldwide. Shwiti Prasad, FBC News. The costume of Miss World Fiji Brittany Hazelman has been selected for the top 10 list at the 65th Miss World pageant underway in China. Hazelman's $3,000 dress represents Fiji's diversity and elegance and the traditional values of Fijian people. to sort of design and prepare. The, the designer Huppelt had uh, used Masi as the base of the national costume this year. We tried to incorporate everything Fijian and a bit of Pacific influence. The costume was designed by Huppelt Herder. Miss Fiji Zyra Beg is ready to represent the nation at the Pacific pageant in Cook Islands next week. Today, a video was launched featuring Beg, which will be shown in Demorda Cinemas till the pageant comes to an end. Beg says she will be advocating on youth empowerment in the pageant. I'm blessed to be the first ever Miss Fiji, and I'm proud of my mixed heritage. So far, my prep has been hectic, I must say, busy schedule. Beg was crowned Miss TFL Fiji in October, and she leaves Fiji on the 6th of December. And on that note, sports is up next. Here's Jamie with the latest. Nakadaki, and good evening in sports after the break. Delays in Churchill Park upgrade force change in 2016 Coca-Cola Games venue. And Fiji under 20 rugby side confident of qualifying for Junior World Trophy. These stories and more after the break. Talita itu nggak lepas. Bulu FM nomor dua enser. Churchill Park in Lautoka will not host the 2016 Coca-Cola Games. It had been earlier announced that the park, currently undergoing some major upgrades, was to host the country's biggest sports meet, but construction delays will not allow the park to be ready in time. Josephine Vula with the details. Straight after the victories by Natomboa High and Jesper Williams High School at the Coca-Cola Games earlier this year, the newly renovated Churchill Park earmarked as the next venue. The people of Lotoka were looking forward to hosting the most looked forward athletics competition next year. As much as you want to have a 
uh, call games to be the opening ceremony for the 2016 uh, for the opening of the Churchill Park, uh, but uh, may not be the case now. But we will uh, finalize everything with the Fiji Secondary School tomorrow. Nakau Vandra adds they are behind their schedule by two to three months due to the requirements that has to be followed. We need to be very, very careful with uh, the, all the processes and procedures that we follow because all these things are subject to audit and uh, we need to just to follow the system and make sure that we comply with all the requirements. The works on the tracks will start in January and completed in six months. The newly upgraded Churchill Park is expected to open in July next year. Josephine Avula, FBC Sports. The Vodafone Fiji and the 20 side is confident of qualifying for the 2016 Junior World Trophy in Zimbabwe. The side demolished Papua New Guinea in the opening match of the Oceania qualifying tournament last week and needs to win its remaining two matches against Vanuatu and Tonga to qualify. Salin Daudakadaka reports. The Fiji under-20 side was on fire against Papua New Guinea, running in 11 tries for a 63-0 victory. The team was back in training today, hoping to lift its performance for the next clash against Vanuatu tomorrow. The game against Pinti, uh, maybe for the boys, even though they're new players, so and maybe for the new players that are coming in, uh, they're really working hard. So yes, the win is all for us. Dambe Naise has featured for the national side for the last three years and hopes to make his final two games a memorable outing. Our main uh, aim for this uh, tournament is to win this tournament so that we can qualify for the next uh, JWT next year. So for our future brothers that is coming for the next few years. After a scintillating display of open rugby last week, the national side promises to deliver a better performance tomorrow at the ANZ Stadium. Silent or the Kazaka, FBC Sports. Cricket Fiji's new under-19 assistant coach says self-belief will be key to a good performance for Fiji in the ICC Under-19 Cricket World Cup in Bangladesh next year. Graham Stewart jetted into the country last night to assist Fiji's preparations for its first appearance at the Cricket World Cup. In the background there's some fantastic work going on as I mentioned through the administration and the coaching with Shane. I'm just here to try and create a belief, to give the players belief in themselves so they can go to a World Cup. I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to go with, to the World Cup with Scotland that's just been in New Zealand and seeing the, the high standard and high level I want to try and filter that onto these young ones and get them believing in themselves so they can win some games. The SEC Under-19 Cricket World Cup will be held in Bangladesh from January 22nd to February 14th. Chess candidate Master Manoj Kumar is the favorite to win the National Open Chess Championship currently underway. The school teacher has been in fine form this year and has remained unbeaten after two days of competition. The tournament also features players from the Philippines, Germany, Solomon Islands and Palau. The final round of competition will be held on Wednesday and will be followed by an awards, awards ceremony. Finally, in sports this evening, thousands of New Zealanders have visited Eden Park to honor the memory of legendary All Black winger Jonah Lomu at a public memorial service. The giant winger's casket was carried onto the field by former teammates, while Eric Rush and former All Black coach John, John Hart delivered moving eulogies. Lomu will be laid to rest in Auckland tomorrow in a private funeral service to be attended by close family and friends. That is your sports for tonight. Good evening. <laughs> Fiji Institute of Accountants will be holding a symposium to discuss the Companies Act 2015. The symposium will elaborate on various topics such as corporate governance, financial reporting and corporate liability. In support of this symposium, ANZ has come on board as the sponsor for the event. ANZ CEO Pacific and Fiji Vishnu Mohan handed over a check of $18,000 to FIA President Noza Farid in Suva today. Mohan says this sponsorship was crucial, especially for an event such as this that will no doubt benefit a lot of businesses. We see the symposium as a very special initiative and commend the FIA uh, for, for creating a platform such as this to enable a better understanding of the Companies Act 2015 and indeed what it means to our business environment in Fiji. The symposium will be held at the Grand Pacific Hotel in Suva on Wednesday, December 2nd.
generally a fine and sunny day with few early showers in most places, including some very light rain in the west. Lautoka was the hottest out of all at 34 degrees, while the other centers were in the low 30s, leaving Sub and Savu Savu the coolest at 30 degrees. Tomorrow is expected to be much like today, some gusty winds and just a chance of afternoon showers up north and in Savu Savu. For Wednesday, fine weather is expected all over the country with few scattered showers in the south and west. At sea, east to southeast winds gusting up to 40 knots, rough to very rough conditions. Our main story is tonight, six-year-old is the latest rape victim in the country. AG's office to investigate sexual assault claims against foreign company. And our story to have new hospital by 2017. On to our poll segment, results now from last week's poll question and we had asked, do we need more police patrols over the festive season? 92% answered yes. This week's question and we are asking, is Christmas becoming too commercialized? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. And before I leave, as you have watched earlier, All Blacks rugby legend John Olomo's funeral service took place in Auckland today. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jack. <laughs>